Hi, my name is Alina Gau and I'm the application chemist here in the headquarters of Büchi in Switzerland. It's still quite cold, but the snow is melting, which actually brings me to the question, when exactly is the melting point of snow? Of course, I know it's around zero degrees, but for other substances, I might not know this and I might, know, might need to know this more precisely. So when we think about melting point, we need to know what exactly is the melting point and how can I measure that? To show you how we do it, I will go up to the lab and show you. There are two melting points on which the scientists have agreed on. One is the melting point according to pharmacopoeia and the other one is the thermodynamic melting point. Now the thermodynamic melting point is the one where the particles first start to melt. And the melting point pharmacopoeia, or also called clear melting point, is the melting point when everything has melted. Now, with our Büchi melting point, we actually can measure both, but the uh, melting point according to pharmacopoeia is more commonly used. Now, if we, let's say we measure a sample and there's an impurity in there. Now the melting point will be lower than we expect. And that is because if we have a pure sample, there's a really high order. But if there's an impurity in there, the order gets disturbed and we need less energy to melt it. So that means that the melting point is lower. Now with measuring the temperature, it's a little bit tricky because you see our sample is in this small capillary and I mean, I can't get a thermometer in there. So the temperature we actually measure is the one of the melting point device. Now, as you can imagine, the temperature isn't exactly the same in this small capillary and in the heating block. So the trick to get a really precise result is to put in a really small gradient. So the difference between the temperature in here and the heating block is really small. But then again, if you put in a small gradient, you need a lot of time. So we need a, we need a small compromise. We need a small enough gradient that our result is still precise, but not so small that it takes too long. So to show you what I mean, I will now start the sample preparation. Now to ensure that we always have the same um, quality of our sample, we first need to grind it for five minutes. Now that we grinded our sample for five minutes, we need to fill the capillaries. For the melting point, for one measurement, we always need three capillaries. So I'm gonna fill those three with our sample loader and show you how to do that. Now I can just put the sample loader on and this also ensures that we always have the same quality of sample because it compresses the sample just right, not too much and not too less. Now my samples are just compromised enough and they need to be filled between 4 and 6 millimeters. This I can also check with the sample holder. So they need to be either here or here on the line. Now let's show how I put in the parameters in my melting point device. I have three, um, three parameters that I can change. The first one is the starting temperature, the end temperature and the gradient. Now for my sample, I know that the melting point is around 111 degrees Celsius. So I will, I will edit the method with this button here and change the start temperature to around five degrees below my melting point temperature. So let's say 105. My end temperature I will put at, let's say 140 degrees. The good thing about this device is that it actually 
stops when it detected the end temperature. So it might be possible it won't even go that high. The gradient of three degrees is a little bit too high for me. For the first run, I always try to put in one Celsius per minute. So now that I did everything, I will save it. Now, to start the measure, I have to press start. Now for my sample name, I actually want to choose um, mystery. So I will just put in the name and save it. So now it is appro approaching the temperature that I want. Now I will put the sample in and will press start. The heating block starts to heat the sample up. And now the sample is starting to melt. There is a camera in there that always measures if there is any change in the sample. So I don't actually need to stand next to it. it does everything automatic. As you can see, the sample gets clearer and clearer, which means the melting process is going further on. Now everything is clear and the melting process is, has ended. The melting point device will now calculate the end temperature automatically, which is the melting point according to Pharmacopeia. Now I can print my results. Now on this paper is all the important information I need. My parameters, also if I measure my melting point according to thermodynamic or pharmacopoeia, my sample ID, and of course the most important information, my melting point, with the average and also the standard deviation. Here are all my melting point curves. So as you can see, they are really similar, which is a good thing. And below here, I have my date, my time, when was the last calibration and the last verification. Now if I need this for an official report, I just can put here the date, my signature and then it's all that I need. Now if we talk about official reports, another really good thing about the melting point is that we can use the so-called user management. So in this device I can put in two users just the user and the admin. The admin can put in methods and the user just can press start and then and insert the sample. So he can't change anything and this ensures that it's always the same thing and we can really use it for official um, reports. Of course, some people prefer to work with computers. So we also have a melting point monitor software that comes that you can um, buy with this device. On there, you can get all the results and also put it in your LIMP software. So that's all about our melting point Büchi device. And if you have any questions, please visit our website www.büchi.com.